What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about today is Dave Chappelle is in the news again, but it's because people are pissed. Chappelle just came out with two Netflix specials. One was shot in 2015, the other 2016. They went up, they've been generally well-received, having an average of 4.5 stars. But that hasn't stopped a lot of people saying that the special wasn't funny because it was homophobic and transphobic. In the comedy special, when it comes to gay rights, he criticized people petitioning the federal court to take the words husband and wife out of the law. He says, please save me the semantics. Take your chips out of the casino. You're about to crap out. Go outside, talk it over amongst yourselves, and whichever one of you is gayer, that's the wife. On the term LGBTQ, he says, what does Q even stand for? Saying it's for gay dudes that don't really know they're gay. Then saying, you know, like guys in prison. They're like, what? I'm not gay. I'm just sucking these dicks to pass the time. Caitlyn Jenner, he says that he misses Bruce. But then that also feeds into a theme around a lot of these jokes, which is competing discrimination. Saying that as a black American, he was jealous. Saying, how are transgender people beating black people in the discrimination Olympics? If the police shot half as many transgenders as they did black people last year, there'd be a fucking war in LA. I know black dudes in Brooklyn hard street motherfuckers who wear high heels just to feel safe. And so coming out of this special, there were people that were for him and there were people that were against him. Those against him saying that this is homophobic, it's transphobic, he is a problematic person. Those defending him saying this is in line with his comedy for the past decade. He's always been a comedian that pushed the line and at the end of the day, it's comedy. When you watch comedy or you go to a comedy show, you take off your real world hat. You live in a bubble. And as far as those asking my opinion, and this is not gonna be shocking to those who have watched me for a while, I have to side with Dave Chappelle. And what I mean there is I don't agree with the stuff that he's saying, but when it comes to comedy, I am usually going to side with the comic pushing the line. When I go to watch comedy, I'm not looking for a politically correct person. I'm looking for a raw look through someone else's eyes. Dave Chappelle also does this whole bit about Bill Cosby and the rape allegations. And there are points in those jokes where people could say it sounds like he's being dismissive and he's disrespecting the women in those cases. But through his style of comedy that, yes, does push the line. He ended up giving me greater insight to why people would defend Bill Cosby, not that Bill Cosby is a good person. Why initially, and then some others, not including him, are still resistant. And I've always found Dave Chappelle and comedians like him to be equal opportunity offenders. That's always just been personally in my mindset. I don't want my comics to be PC. Louis C.K. going on SNL and making weird ass pedophile jokes, stuff where you see where he's talking about it almost to lose the audience just so he can get them back, that's the kind of comedy I love to see. But like I always say, that's just my opinion. I'd love to know yours. Like I always say, yes, this is a show, but it's also a conversation. I wanna know what you beautiful bastards, all the way on the left to all the way on the right, and maybe even in the upside down, what are you thinking? Are you the same mindset as me? Or no, he did cross the line, he is wrong. Even if it's supposed to be comedy, you don't completely take your real world hat off. Let me know what you're thinking. Then let's talk about 18 year old Brianna Talbot of Texas. Brianna was in the news because on a Wednesday night, she burst into her local church. She was only wearing a shirt, bra, underwear, she was bleeding, she said that she had been kidnapped and sexually assaulted by three black men. She said she didn't know who they were, they were wearing ski masks, they put her in the back of a black SUV, and then they gang raped her behind the church. And it was this horrifying story that looked like it shook Brianna, her fiance, her family, the whole neighborhood. This community had many fearful of who's going to be abducted next. And after this happened, it seemed like this case was at a standstill. There were no suspects, there were no arrests. And people even grew more frustrated. This happened on March 8th, Women's Day. How do they have no suspects? How how is this not a bigger story? And people started sharing this image, saying three black men kidnapped and gang raped an engaged 18 year old white girl yesterday, March 8th on Women's Day. If the races were reversed, this would be national news. These men must be brought to justice. And then on March 21st, a breakthrough. We finally got that justice because it turned out that Brianna Talbot lied and made up the whole thing. According to reports, Brianna confessed to the hoax March 21st to a member of the investigative team working the case. It never happened. And as far as her wounds, they were reportedly self-inflicted. The alleged crime scenes stage and I'm just left wondering why? Why would anyone ever do this? Reportedly the police department is going to file a criminal case against her for a false report and in Texas I believe that means she faces up to 180 days in jail and a fine and on top of that they're also going to seek restitution because there was a lot of money wasted looking for someone that didn't exist. But still at the end of the story I'm left so disgusted. Is even a, is 180 days, which she most likely won't get the maximum, is 180 days enough? Not only did she make false allegations that help spread fake news and fear mongered, oh, black people are scary. Real rape victims in our society have it so hard as is. So many people will just instantly not believe you, make excuses or say, were you drinking? What were you dressed like? And then they get to point to cases like Brianna and go, see, someone did it. This girl lied, so who's to say that you're not lying? I'm just, 
I'm, I'm done with this story. And from there, I wanna share some stuff I love today. And today in awesome brought to you by the sports shirt. The shirt that says, thank you for inviting me to this sports event. I am going to root for the same person and or team as you, but I am not going to buy a $150 official t-shirt. That's crazy because as soon as I leave this party, I will go back to not caring about sports. But yeah, team and or person sports. And so if you wanna snag that shirt, this run is available for three more days. Link to that down below. And the first bits of awesome are trailer awesome. You got a new Baywatch trailer, which just stopped, just released the movie. I'm gonna go watch it. You got The Rock and Alexandra Daddario. I'm in. There's been enough foreplay. Then we got a trailer for the animated movie Captain Underpants, and I apparently am the only person who do- has no idea what this is. Apparently I missed out in childhood, but it actually looks good. Then we got a trailer for the new Mystery Science Theater 3000, and it looks fantastically campy. Then Ghost in the Shell, instead of releasing another trailer, they just released four minutes of the movie on Twitter. Then I want to pimp out a fantastic musician I just discovered. Probably gonna mispronounce this, but it's I Am Kawaii. Part of it's I love the song. Part of it I just love that she was, she did this. She brought me in with the weird and cute of this music video, and I've been I've been loving everything since. And then I got a pimp out casually explained who put out a fantastic video called Evolution 3, the human player type. It is, it is just so funny, and it actually had like a real message involved. So I had to give it some love. And remember, if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about massive YouTube news. Well, many have been talking about, complaining, ranting about YouTube's controversial restricted mode, a mode where many people found their video were being blocked. Well, that's kind of small potatoes to the problem that Google and YouTube is having right now. And that's because huge companies like AT&T, Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, many, many major US companies are pulling their ads off of the platform. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in ad revenue. AT&T specifically is halting all ad spending on Google except for search ads. So those ads won't be appearing on YouTube now. And it seems like a big reason for that is based around a point that I made a very long time ago. When the news around the YouTube demonetization issue hit a while back and I made that video of YouTube shutting down my channel and I don't know what to do. And then it turned out that they'd actually been demonetizing videos for a long time. They were just letting us in on it now. And a question I posed was when I'm just saying words and I'm getting my ads pulled, why is that happening when there's a video of a bombing? And right next to that video was like a Campbell soup ad. How the hell does that make sense? Why am I being punished for words? Well, it turned out a lot of advertisers didn't like that that was happening. And there were some reports that their ads were even showing up next to videos that were promoting terrorism. AT&T said in a statement, we are deeply concerned that our ads may have appeared alongside YouTube content promoting terrorism and hate. Until Google can ensure this won't happen again, we are removing our ads from Google's non-search platforms. And when I looked further into this, what I found is that this is actually just an escalation of a big problem Google has had in the UK for a while. In the UK, there's been an advertiser boycott going on. Reportedly, more than 250 organizations, including the British government themselves, Toyota, McDonald's, even more, have pulled their advertising off of YouTube and the Google Display Network. And many experts are still saying that this is still just the beginning of what will become many. Now, as far as YouTube's response to the latest companies to drop out, I have not seen that. But in response to the problems and complaints that the advertisers have expressed, last week they said, we've heard from our advertisers and agencies loud and clear that we can provide simpler, more robust ways to stop their ads from showing against controversial content. We will be making sure in the coming weeks to give brands more control where their ads appear across YouTube and the Google Display Network. And of course, that's when creators get concerned because how? When you have a company as big as Google, you have a product as big as YouTube, and you have so many places Places that ads can appear. Just on YouTube, and this is probably an old statistic, they said back in 2016, 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. How can you implement anything that goes through all of that content? And then on top of that, tons of websites with individual posts. How can you put anything into place that makes sure that that content is advertiser friendly in a way that it works and makes all the advertisers happy, but also in a way that doesn't falsely hurt creators? Is that possible? I personally do not believe so. I think it becomes a case of, well, we know whatever we implement implement's not going to be 100% effective. But we, as a giant company who has to think about making money first, we'll put something into place that makes the advertisers happy, and when it messes up for our creators, we'll try and make a system that helps and fixes that as fast as possible. And that's really just me jumping into the shoes of YouTube and Google and thinking of a best case scenario. And so I empathize with the situation YouTube and Google is in right now. And I also understand the mindset of these advertisers that are worried about their, their baby. Advertisers think of their products as their baby, and then all of a sudden they're seeing their baby next to an ISIS video. But then I also, understand the fear that this situation causes many because those who get fucked in this situation are usually the creators. Because creators to suits are just delivery vehicles for money. And if that vehicle breaks down, stops bringing in that money, they are in a position to go, well, why waste our time? So I guess my main point here is uh, I'm very intrigued to see what is going to be implemented and how it's going to affect everyone. And hopefully YouTube can also communicate with us 
as things change, please. And then let's talk about President Trump. Donald Trump is of course always in the news, but one of the most requested stories this week is one story, one seemingly same bit of information that people are perceiving two different ways. And this is about Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and wiretapping. And the reason we're talking about this today is on March 4th, Donald Trump said, terrible, just found out that Obama had my wires tapped, I'm doing air quotes, in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. Is it legal for a sitting president to be wiretapping a race for president? prior to an election. Turned down by court earlier, a new low. How low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the very secret election process? And so then people said, show us evidence. He said, hey, I read an article about it, but we should investigate this. And that went on for a while. Trump opponents saying, how are you going to make this claim and then not provide evidence? And then Trump and many of his supporters pointed to a New York Times article where the word wiretap was used in reference to Trump aides. So then this week we have FBI Director James Comey, Director of the National Security Agency Michael S. Rogers, both dismissed missing Trump's claim that Barack Obama had him wiretapped. With respect to the president's tweets about alleged wiretapping directed at him by the prior administration, I have no information that supports those tweets, and we have looked carefully inside the FBI. The Department of Justice has asked me to share with you that the answer is the same for the Department of Justice and all its components. The department has no information that supports those tweets. And then Comey told the House Intelligence Committee this. I have been authorized by the Department of Justice to confirm that the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government, and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. Then yesterday, House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes, a Republican out of California, said he had a source within the intelligence community that had shown him dozens of reports that were produced from incidentally collected communications between members of the Trump transition team and foreign targets. And so this one bit of information seemed to hit Trump supporters and Trump opponents in a completely different way. Many Trump supporters believing what Nunes said was, yes, Donald Trump was right, Obama wiretapped Trump. Trump even telling Time Magazine as they were reading the other sites article. Wow, so that means I'm right. But Trump opponents are arguing, no, that's not what this information says. Nunes even saying that all of this looks like it was collected legally. And the recording of Trump aides was incidental because they were trying to listen to someone else. So it wasn't actually Trump or his aides or Trump Tower that was actually tapped. And so their argument of why Trump is wrong here is essentially like if I had a friend named Greg and Greg had, for some reason, was wiretapped. If I at some point call Greg, that doesn't mean I got wiretapped. I wasn't the target. It was an incidental recording. So I can't say I'm being wiretapped. And that's also separate from the claim that it was Obama. None of this seems to point to Obama, it seems to point to the intelligence community. But on the note of the incidental recordings, there were people saying, well, look, this is evidence that ties back to Comey saying that they are investigating Russian ties, and oh, if, if all of a sudden the, the Trumps are being recorded, maybe that's because they have the ties. Well, to that argument, Nunes says that it appears that these incidental recordings most likely don't have to do with the Russian ties. And on top of all of that, there's been a lot of fallout because Nunes went to the White House with this information before he went to the intelligence committee. You got John McCain saying that because of this, the House panel has lost their credibility. He called Nunes' actions very disturbing and said he wants an independent investigation. And that's where we are right now. Obviously, there's also a lot more going on here. We've got a healthcare vote, Gorsuch trying to get on the Supreme Court. I honestly don't know what's gonna happen next. But that said, that's where I'm gonna end today's show. Whether it be this final story, the first one, anything in between, I'd love to know your thoughts today. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss these daily videos, which actually, on that note, if you wanna watch yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to see the Wednesday behind the scenes vlog, you can click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.